now we can create a new widget. I'm going to call it tutorial widget. Open that up. Go to the class settings and change its parent to UI nav widget. This is going to add all the plugins functionality to this widget. Keep in mind that for the plugin, you should always use the UI nav button class instead of button. It's the same thing, but it has a few extra options that the plugin needs. So I'm going to create a vertical option, a vertical box with a bunch of options. There, we have a vertical box with the new game, options, credits, and exit options. I'm just going to increase the font size a little bit. And of course, we have our title screen. The first thing to keep in mind about the plugin is that UINAV widgets cannot be nested. So you can't just put another UINAV widget inside of this UINAV widgets hierarchy because that's going to generate an error. In order to fix that, I have created a class called UINAV collection, which I'll be getting into in a later episode. So the first thing you should keep in mind about the plugin is how it attributes indices. It's going to traverse the widgets hierarchy from top to bottom, and it's going to automatically assign indices to the buttons that it finds. So the first button that it finds is the new game button, which is going to be attributed index zero, then the options button, which is going to be attributed index one, etc. It will do this for all of the widget and attribute all the indices automatically. Now let's go to the graph. In order to set up the plugins navigation, you need to specify the widget as a bunch of grids. In this case, we have a vertical grid, which has four buttons. So we're going to specify it as such using the append navigation functions. You have two options, or three rather. You have the append navigation grid 1D, which you can use to set up horizontal and vertical grids. Keep in mind that you've, if you send a grid 2D type, to the 1D navigation grid, it will get you an error, so don't do that. Or you can set up your navigation grid 2Ds this way. The way these parameters work is you have the first one, which is the grid type. In our case, it's going to be vertical. Then you have the dimension, which is how many buttons are in this grid. Then you have the edge navigation. I'll be getting into that in a couple seconds. And then you have the wrap boolean. What the wrap boolean is for is it dictates whether navigation wraps around the grid. So if I'm navigating down from new game to options, credits, exit, and I press down, if the wrap boolean is set to false, nothing happens. But if the wrap boolean is set to true, I'm going to navigate to the new game option. And the same thing when I'm navigating up from credits, options, new game, and the wrap boolean set to true, I'm going to navigate to the exit option. Lastly, we have the edge navigation. 
the way the edge navigation works is it's simply a struct with references to four buttons, which are the buttons that the player is going to navigate to when exiting the grid in either the up, down, left, or right direction. So if I want the player to navigate to a specific button when he or she presses left when navigating this grid, I have to set up that button as a left button of this grid's edge navigation. I'm going to explain that a bit in a second as well. In order to set up these grids, you have to use the ready for setup event, which is the event that the plugin is going to call in order to get all of the widgets set up. Keep in mind that you should only use the append navigation grids um, in this event. You can also access data from these grids using the navigation grids array, which will give you all of the info you need for each of the grids. In order to demonstrate the edge navigation functionality, I'm going to add two new buttons to our widget. Now remember when I said that the plugin traverses the widget from top to bottom? It's going to add the buttons to the grids according to how it traverses the widget. So in this case, if I set up this grid as a dimension of four, the plugin is going to associate the first four buttons that it has with that grid. And then if I set up another grid 2D, or rather I don't want a grid 2D, I want another grid 1D and I set it to dimension 1 the plugin is going to associate the next button as a one dimensional grid also because these buttons are self-contained within their own grid and there, there's only one of them it doesn't really matter whether you set them up as a horizontal or vertical grid as long as it's a one dimensional grid Also, just a recommendation, instead of hard coding the dimension of a grid, I usually fetch the panel's children count instead, because that way I can easily add or remove buttons from a certain grid. So I can get this vertical box's children count. And that way I can simply add and remove buttons from this grid and I don't have to change the edge navigations or rather the navigation grids functions. I'm going to add another grid for our last right button because this way I have a grid for the vertical box which contains all the four options then the left and the right button. Now the edge navigation of our vertical box is going to be the left button when the user navigates left and the right button when the user navigates right. So I'm going to get the left button and feed it to the left button parameter, get the right button and do the same thing for the right button parameter. Now I have to set up the other button's edge navigation. So remember, this grid is for our next button, which is our left button. And I want to navigate to, for instance, the new game option when the player presses right on the left button. So I'm going to throw in the new game button to the right button parameter and to the left button parameter on the right button. In order to specify how I want this grid to be navigated, I have to go to the class defaults and select some options. In this case, I want to use the button states and the text color to navigate the options. 
I'm also going to change the text navigated color to red instead of green. Another two options of navigation you have are by using a selector, which is a 2D widget that traverses the screen, or with animations. I'm going to be demonstrating that in a second. In order to add our widget to the screen, we have to set up a player controller. So I'm going to do that right now. Tutorial PC. Now, in order to set up this player controller as a UINF controller, you can do it in two ways. You can simply change the parent class to UINF controller. Or if for some reason you don't want to do that because you already have another parent class that you need, you can simply add a UINF PC component as an actor component and also implement the UINF PC receiver interface. In this case, those things are already automatically done because I changed the parent to UINF controller. Now, on begin play, I'm going to create a widget. It's going to be our tutorial widget. I have to send the self as the owning player. Then I want to add this class to the viewport. I want to set show mouse cursor to true. I want to set ignore look and move input so that our movement and look input are ignored. And I'm just going to set input mode game and UI at least. Now, I have to make sure that this player controller is used, so I'm going to create a new blueprint from the game mode blueprint. I'm going to call it tutorial GM. I'm going to open it up and change its player controller class to UI net no wait, tutorial PC. And I also have to go to the blueprints. Oh, it's already set up as the default. Hmm. Well, make sure you have this game mode as your default game mode. Now, if I press play, I can now navigate my widget. So I can use my keyboard, which is what I'm currently using. I can also use the gamepad. Or, of course, I can also use the mouse.